This is Algebra 2, Lesson 91, on page 377. Linear inequalities. Okay, we've not had linear inequalities. We've had one-dimensional inequalities that we've graphed on a number line. Now we're going to have lines that are inequality, all right? So look, a line divides a set of points on the plane. If I just draw a line, <coughs> A line divides a set of points into three specific subsets, all right? It's either the points above it, all the points above that line, or y greater than mx plus b. Every point above that line is y greater than mx plus b. So this is above, above the line. Then there's every point on the line. So literally on the line is y equals mx plus b. Below the line, you can probably anticipate what that would be. Below the line is y less than mx plus b. Such that if I had an equation that was y greater than mx plus b and I graphed it, my line would not be a solid line. The way that you indicate that the solution set is not on the line is you draw a hyphenated line. And then you shade all of the area above the line. Okay? But now what if I have a set of linear equations. What if I have two linear equations? Well, there's two options. Either they intersect or the two lines are parallel. That's correct. Two options if I have two lines. Either they intersect or the lines are parallel. When we have two lines that intersect, then we have four areas that these two intersecting lines divide the plane into. Look. There's this area here, one. Okay, look, it's greater than that one and greater than that one. Got it? There's a, this area. This area is less than this line, but greater than that line. You see it? We have this area. This area is less than that line and less than the, that line. So it's less than both of them. All right? And then there's this area. It's less than this line on top, but greater than that line on the bottom. So there are four areas that intersecting lines divide the plane into. Got it? When we have parallel lines, there's only three areas. This area. <clears throat> that area is greater than both of the lines. It's greater than the top line. It's greater than the line on the bottom. 
Make sense? So this is greater than, greater than. There's this area in the middle. This area in the middle is greater than this bottom line, but it is less than the top line. Make sense? And then there's this area beneath, which is less than both of the lines. If the inequality also is equal to, our line will be a solid line when we graph it, the line. If it is only greater than or less than, our line will be a hyphenated line when we graph it. The hyphenated line indicates that there are no points on that line where that equation is equal, all right? All right, so look at example one, the bottom of page 379. We're going to work an example. It says graph the solution y less than one half x plus two because it's not equal to in my mind, I'm knowing my line is going to be hyphenated. And because it's less than, I know only the area below the line is going to be graphed. All right, so I'm, I'm going ahead and writing me some reminders. All right. The other equation, I'm going to write over here, y greater than or equal to negative x minus three. This is gonna be a solid line. It's greater than, so I'm, I'm shading every point above it. But I want the solution that's, that satisfies both of these, not just one of them. I want the set of solution that is both less than this equation and greater than this equation. All right, so I begin by graphing the lines. All right, remembering when we graph them, I'm starting with the y-intercept and I'm graphing the slope. All right, so this one will be in blue, and I'll do the other one in a different color, okay? So I begin with two, and I graph up one over two. Up one over two. Reminding myself it's a hyphenated line because it's not equal to it. I'm not shading yet, but guys, I'm going to draw little arrows down. Your book doesn't do this. To remind me, I'm, I'm, when I look at this, I'm shading what goes down. That's what it reminds me to do. All right, for this equation, my y-intercept is negative three, and my slope is negative one, so it goes down one over one, down one over one. I'm gonna go back the other way because they're gonna intercept over here. It's a solid line because it is also equal to, and I'm graphing everything above it. So I'm drawing little arrows. Okay, let's look at the four areas. This area on the top is not less than, so I'm not shading that area. Got it? It satisfies the red one, but doesn't satisfy the blue one. Do you see that? Everybody see that? 
Yes, no. This area doesn't satisfy, satisfy either the red one or the blue one. There are no arrows pointing into it. This area satisfies the blue, but not the red. It's not below the red. You see this? This area satisfies both the blue and the red. This is the area that is shaded. Every number, every value in this area will work in either one of those. So let's just pick one. Four, negative one. I could pick any of these coordinate points within here and it would satisfy both the blue and the red one. So you can always check yourself on these. All right, so let's plug it in. When y is negative one, is that less than, what's half of four? Two plus two? Is negative one less than four? Yes, that works. All right, here, negative one, greater than or equal to. The opposite value of four is negative four minus three. Is negative one greater than? Yes, it does satisfy. And you could have picked any point in this region and it would have worked in both of the equations. All right, there's one more example. On page 380, near the bottom. y greater than x minus 2, y greater than x minus 2. It's not equal to, so I am drawing a what kind of line? That's right, hyphenated line. It's greater than, so am I going above or below? Above. Just some reminders to myself before I graph them. The other one, y less than or equal to x, plus one. What's my line going to look like? Solid. Am I graphing above or below? Below. Got it? So you're following this part of it. Jude, following it? Okay. All right, let's graph it, both of them. All right, I'm going to start with my y-intercept, graph the slope, it's 1 over 1. I will rise 1 as I run 1, rise as I run, go back in the other direction. This one is going to be a hyphenated line. And I'm going to remind myself I'm graphing above it. All right, this one, the y-intercept is one. My slope is one. They have the same, same slope, different y-intercepts. So the lines are going to be parallel. This one's going to be a solid line. And I'm graphing below it. Ah, it's the area in between. Can you already see that? Because this area above that line satisfies the hyphenated line, but doesn't satisfy the solid line. This area below it satisfies the solid line because it's below it, but it doesn't satisfy the hyphenated line. So you will shade in the area in between the two lines, the two parallel lines.